All right, guys, welcome back to another video tutorial. As you know, I have been gone for a very, very long time now, and uh, there are no excuses, but there are no explanations as well. And this video, starting off, this is going to be a boring video. This is going to be full of information and no tools at all. But the next upcoming video will be actually quite interesting. We're going to be using Burp Suit. Uh, if you don't know about Burp Suit, you should totally check it out. It's pretty awesome, man. It's a pretty awesome tool. Like, I can guarantee right now that every hacker in the past 10 years and right now, every hacker is using Burp Suit. I can bet on that. Anyways, let's get on to the slides over here. So what I'm going to teach you about is HTTP headers and response types. These are going to be very crucial while you're using Burp Suit or doing any... Oh, really? You have to text me now while I am recording? Nice. So, okay, these are going to be really helpful while you're uh, analyzing a web application. So let's hop right in. So first of all, we're going to be analyzing what an HTTP is. If you guys don't know about HTTP, I don't know what standard you're in. <laughs> if you're four years old, just switch this video off. This is not for you. Uh, I'm just going to give you a basic guide, basic understanding of what HTTP is. HTTP uses a message-based uh, model in which client sends a request and the server returns a response message. It is a TCP-based protocol and uh, it has an autonomous mechanism. So the TCP connections can change at any time in the request of course after the request has been accepted or rejected by the server so this is what an http request looks like first of all there will be the type of http request that uh, we are uh, sending to the server so this is a get request you're going to be majorly focusing on get push and get put and post so this is get this is the url this is the extension so this tells us that this is the dot net type of file and this is the query string that we have inputted this is the http uh, version number so 1.1 is latest they're working on 2 2 is getting tested out or i'm pretty sure 2 is tested out and hasn't been deployed commercially and uh, these are all of the headers over here all right these are all of the headers that we're going to be messing around with and we're going to be understanding so let's get on to it wow http response why did i put this in anyways this is the http response nothing too interesting about this until unless it's with the code 500 uh, i'm going to be teaching about codes as well so First of all, let's go with HTTP headers. These were the HTTP headers, like I said, date, server, expired, etc, etc, etc. These are the actual headers. So content encoding. These are pretty basic, like you can get what an HTTP header does just by looking at the name. So uh, content encoding specify the type of encoding being used. Here's a nice tip, all right? Whenever you see a base64 or an hex encoding data, just try to decode it, like no matter what, uh, mostly in cookies and uh, what ha there are often encoded HTTP headers and cookies so you're gonna want to take a look at that how you can identify a base64 encoding uh, you know what I'm gonna tell you about base64 encoding in the next video tutorial I am not gonna be able to show you or you know what forget it I'm just gonna put up a next video on this but just try to figure out what base64 is and what hex is hex is pretty similar if you have attended any of the basic encoding classes or basic programming classes you should already know about hex encoding and then the content type what type of uh, data can be transferred or is being transferred through that http request either it's in text html image whatever then the transfer encoding transfer encoding is very important because you should know what type of encoding that is being used while you're uh, transferring sensitive information across the network or through the server then we have request headers accept accept encoding authorization cookie uh, let me tell you what's interesting about it actually all of these headers are quite interesting authorization uh, most people will be guessing or reading it first is submit your credentials uh, for the built-in authentication system there are different types of authentication system and uh, like i said when we start burp i'm going to tell you all about it except uh, tells you what kind of uh, request the server will accept for example uh, put request, post uh, post request, etc, etc, etc. I think I have a particular si slide on cookies. And uh, then we have authorization. Uh, already did that. Accept encoding, the type of encoding that is being used again. Then we have host. Uh, this is in the request header, by the way. Then we have the host. Uh, it specifies the host name in the URL in if modified since. All right. If modified since and if none change these two headers are going to be really crucial while you're actually analyzing a web application these are actually pretty cool so if modify since specifies when the browser last received the requested resource and the server uh, the server determines whether you should use the cached copy of your resource or should i generate a new one for this particular browser 
uh, then we have if none match again if you do not have the cached resource you can uh, if you do not have the cache resource in the whole entirety of it so the server is just gonna issue a new one or the latest one to you origin is used when you're using cross side uh, ajax okay how many uh, okay i cannot ask you how many of you know about the ajax but uh, what ajax does is that uh, you can uh, do some server size processing without actually refreshing the page so uh, cross side cross domain ajax requests usually occur when a very intensive task is going on and you want to distribute the workload and uh, wait a minute uh, request headers all right moving on uh, response headers access control allow origin checks if uh, cross site ajax is possible or not cache control like i said uh, cache control wouldn't be too helpful until unless you're trying to cause an overflow uh, then we have e tag client submits this identifier uh, for the same okay if none match is you know true then the server will just give you a new resource then we have expires usually this is in the cookies and uh, you know how some downloads are just not resumable that's because of this header location uh, is when you're redirecting from one page to another uh, for example if there is a 404 the resource that you're looking for it hasn't been found it shows you the 404 and that just redirects you uh, server okay the reason why it is in bold these both uh, not because this is super important, just because LibreOffice sucks. It sucks, it sucks, it sucks, it's a reality, deal with it. Uh, then we have the server. What type of server software that uh, the particular server is, server is using, of course. And uh, this is going to come in handy when you're actually doing some uh, banner grabbing with Nmap or, you know, Netcat if you're into stealth and stuff. Uh, set cookie sets a cookie uh, like I said I have a particular slide on cookies then we have authenticate it is used for 401 responses whenever you get a 401 response it means uh, that you have to be authenticated or you have to be logged in to access that particular resource I should really keep a glass of water aside while I'm talking X frame option this is te this tells you how the whole thing is going to be displayed on the web page Again, cookies. Cookies are actually quite fun. Cookies, I, I fucking love cookies, man. You have no idea how many vulnerabilities are caused by it. Uh, mostly when you're looking for XSS, try to inject some XSS code, uh, of course, bypassing some URL encoding into the cookie header. It's always fun. Uh, cookie always is submitted to the server. It has your session cookie and other encoded data, and it can be separated by, okay, he's texting me again, really? Anyways, uh, and this is separated by semicolon. Uh, cookie can contain values such as expires, domains, path, secure, HTTP only. So secure uh, means it the particular response will be transferred over HTTPS. HTTP only, or is that HTTP only? I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Oh yeah, uh, HTTP only refers when uh, the particular resource cannot be accessed by the client side javascript yes and then we have status codes okay so you guys see must see 404 most of the time maybe some five errors but these are quite interesting by the way these are all server side errors uh 300 are not that interesting 200 meh, somewhat uh 100 just sucks <laughs> so let's get on uh, 100 continue it means the request was submitted please send more 200 okay create uh 201 it is when you have uploaded something and it has been uploaded successfully so you can just move on and the user doesn't have to be prompted 301 move permanently redirects to some other pages in the location header 400 bad request 400 are quite fun 500 are 500 are quite fun sometimes a 301 okay i'm i'm gonna teach you exercise by the way so don't worry about it uh, then we have 400 bad request it means when you okay uh, did I tell you guys that you can actually manipulate the data through burp okay manipulate the request through burp so this is quite handy uh, then we have 401 unauthorized requires authentication like I said uh, you have to be logged in to access the resource 404 not found for a file for a five uh, method not allowed for example if you're trying to use put or get or post uh, somewhere where it only takes get then it will prompt you with this uh, particular response code then we have 40 what the hell 413 uh, this tells you that the request entity is too large for example you're trying uh, if you're trying to cause a buffer overflow uh, what happens is that okay 
if the log you see somehow when whenever you're trying to type a username or type uh, typing a search in a search bar what happens is that after a certain point it just stops taking your input that's a uh, client side validation sometimes that client side validation is not replicated on the server side which it always should be so what happens is that you're able to uh, disable your javascript and enter more of the characters than are allowed and uh, there is no back checking on the server side so it just causes a buffer buffer overflow uh, 414 is same as 413 just causes a buffer overflow saying that uh, the url that you entered is just too freaking long 500 internal server error it means something messed up in the server some data that you inputted there's an exception and that exception isn't being handled in the server side code so these are always fun to look uh, around 503 service unav unavailable it means the server is up but the service that you're looking for is down uh, 503 is quite nice and that's the end of the slide meh seems in incomplete i swear to god do i only have these slides uh, anyways actually this must be all that i want to teach you guys and the next video will be dropping within within two or three days don't worry about it okay here's the fun thing about linux it's freaking awesome it gives you a huge power a uh, huge control a total control over your hardware this is what sucks about it when you i have tried updating my linux uh, from the kernel version 4.9 and every single time that i have hit upgrade and yes and i have done all the things right whenever i reboot i will not reboot into my I will not, never be able to reboot into uh, my actual OS. I always have to go in recovery mode and recover. The last time when I, I had actually installed Parrot OS and uh, when I installed uh, 4. Point, okay, 4.12, yes, 4.12 uh, kernel version, it sucked. My internet stopped working. I tried to change the DNS. I did everything in my power. And at that point, I was so fucking frustrated. I actually installed Linux, uh, Kali Linux, all over again, and it kind of sucks because I liked Parrot OS. I like the look and the feel and the tools that I'm given. It just kind of sucks that uh, these guys are actually just pushing out updates and not actually checking if they work. And that kind of sucks. That's a little bit of a rant about Parrot OS. So stick to Kali <laughs> if you want to use your operating system for a very long time. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, like this button. If you dislike it, you already know what to fucking do. And uh, some people have pointed out that my accent is a little funny. I do stutter. I have stuttered in this video as well. And you know what? There are no excuses for that. If I'm trying to teach you guys something and if I stutter and you misinterpret what I'm saying, that's all my fault. Uh, so you know what? I'm going to try and improve. I'm going to try and work on my vocabulary a little bit. So thank you guys. Thank you for all the love and support. And thank you. Thank you for all the people that have been saying that I create nice videos. It actually boosts up morale. And it's quite the reason that I uploaded. I might not have uploaded anymore. But thank you guys so much, man. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you have any questions, just uh, put them in the comments down below. Thank you. And how do you stop recording? Uh.